Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're having a terrific Thursday thus far. And so, of course, in this video, uh, I'm going to be giving you guys the latest in terms of what is happening across the Atlantic and also the Pacific. I want to go over that ocean basin as well. And uh, I'm also going to be including an explanation for the halo that was seen in Jamaica yesterday. So that beautiful halo around the sun, uh, I'll be going into a bit of a detail about it and why and how it happens so uh if you're curious about that stay tuned and so before i go into details please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update Okay, and so first things first, we want to take a look at the satellite imagery across the Atlantic Basin. And we can see here that uh, there is some activity noted in some areas. And we have some activity associated with the dissipating front that extends into the Caribbean. And so uh, we can definitely see uh, that activity here as we take a closer look at the Caribbean. And so uh, this is likely inducing some overcast conditions, maybe with some brief showers, especially the Greater Antilles for part of eastern Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, in, and even going into the Bahamas and going out. But uh, aside from that activity, there isn't anything of great concern across the region or great significance. And, but let's hop over into the eastern Pacific. I want to briefly talk about something. And so uh, here we have this activity over in the eastern Pacific. We have this blob of uh, lots of showers and thunderstorms, this concentrated area. And of course, it is not a disturbance. It's not marked as a disturbance nor is it a, a storm if you're curious about that however uh we have very warm sea surface temperatures over in the eastern pacific and that is fueling uh that is what fueled this thing here to become so uh gigantic and uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this as the uh pacific hurricane season approaches on the 15th but also notice that sort of eastward this a displacement of that activity now that is the effect of the wind shear and if we look at this map here uh where we have the reds that is indicating stronger winds and of course those arrows are indicating that eastward direction so uh it's the effect of the wind shear displacing that activity toward the east so those upper level winds uh they typically help to prevent or suppress tropical cyclone activity uh, and that is sort of the effect we're seeing here with this blob of convection but a lot more of this is on the way uh, let's look at this temperature anomaly map here and here we can see uh, these darker red shades which indicate that temperatures are higher than normal and so uh as you're going to be heading throughout this hurricane season for the Pacific, it's likely that there will be more activity over there while suppressed activity over in the Atlantic. But it might not be very suppressed as uh, temperatures, sea surface temperatures over in the Atlantic Basin are also warming up very nicely. So there is some anomalous warmth taking place over there and that could counteract uh, or help to counteract the effects of that expected El Nino. Of course, we're not in an El Nino right now, but the chance is high uh, for us to be in El Nino conditions later this year, but things are neutral at the moment. But even though El Nino typically results in a below average season, I'm thinking that we could see more of a near average uh, season this year for the Atlantic just because of the very warm ocean surface temperatures. So uh, that is what is going on for those areas, guys. But now let's go ahead and talk about that halo. So I posted this in the community section of my channel. And uh, this is what I captured yesterday, of course. And uh, actually, there were two halos, but one was actually an arc below that main bright one. It was a lot fainter. So what happens is that in the upper atmosphere, there are tiny ice crystals, especially in association with cirrus clouds. Now, these clouds are high up of course and they look very feathery across the sky and notice that if you even look up images of solar halos most times you would be seeing those clouds around they would be quite evident now what happens is that those ice crystals they act as tiny prisms when we think about the normal formation of a rainbow this is what happens we have the sunlight uh, ref being refracted through water droplets uh, that is what causes uh, regular rainbows to take place it's something similar but it's just that instead of water droplets we have ice crystals up there and uh, that refraction happens at an angle of 22 degrees from that broken line which is called a normal 
And so uh, hence such halos are also known as 22 degree halos. And they also happen around our moon, of course. So uh, that is what happens. It's basically sunlight being refracted by those ice crystals in the upper atmosphere. So uh, that is just a bit of quick information on how they happen. And it's just a matter of science and how things work in our atmosphere guys so uh, that is pretty much it for this update video and so uh, i hope that you guys found it to be quite informative and uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments and i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be weatherwise